welcome again to the lecture series The Ascended Masters Answer the Fundamental Questions of Life. This lesson is entitled Lesson 14, Part 3. Let us talk about the strictness of the cosmic law. The cosmic law governs all affairs of this planet. It is the ultimate authority. Under the provisions of the cosmic law, the masters are the authority of the ascended realm, but a master can only interfere in the affairs of the human realm if so specifically invited. If so invited, it is a law that the greater consciousness, in this case that of the ascended master, must always answer the call of the lesser, namely unascended beings. What you invite an ascended master is just the beginning. The cosmic law insists that energy so expanded from the ascended master realm must be balanced by manifesting practical works namely selfless service to God and mankind, such as serving as a volunteer. From this discussion it is apparent that it is primarily up to us, the Chilas, to make the initial efforts to save ourselves and the planet. Because of the accumulated mass karma of mankind, the cosmic law will only make very limited concessions to the Great White Brotherhood. The Mahajan said, we have stretched the cosmic law thin. In other words, the ascended masters have stretched the cosmic law as far as it could possibly go to achieve a blessing for the earth. Any further request by the ascended masters not accompanied by a sufficient constructive effort of the chilas may be responded to by the cosmic law with sharp Reaction. If we follow the directives laid out before us, the ascended masters and the cosmic law will help. Then the earth axis may be straightened and the dispensation of 1952 may be followed by another new dispensation. Therefore, those who have the vision of the Great White Brotherhood, those who are members of the spiritual caravan, need to come together, roll up their sleeves and go to work considering this work as a holy mission. One master said, there are many dreamers, there are many who say somehow things will turn out all right, but what we need is practical workers who shall be our hands and our representatives on this planet. Mother Mary added, there is no such thing, beloved ones, as lukewarm chilas. Worldwide service required. According to the Ascended Masters, a cosmic service is required which will cover the entire surface of the planet. Only in this way can the current crisis be brought under control. The students of Ascended Master teaching must unite their strength and join their energies to stem the tide of evil which must be rooted out of the human race before a permanent age of peace and world brotherhood can be established. The task before us is huge. Sometimes it may appear overwhelming. But provided we serve willingly and are committed to our task, viewing it as a holy mission, we will get limitless help from our own I Am Presence and the Ascended Host. Reading the dictations of the Great Ones should be only the beginning. This provides much knowledge, but what is learned must be put into practice. All of us at one time contributed to the problems the earth faces today. Jointly we fell, and jointly it is our responsibility to release the earth from our present dilemma and restore the harmony, beauty and perfection of the original Garden of Eden. Serving God and the Masters gives us a great opportunity to give a balance to life. The law of life, the law of one's being, is more than just talking about love and peace. It is the accomplishment which is important. 
On this subject, the Master had the following to say. Those whose studies and convictions have given them a cleaner and deeper insight in the laws of life need to put aside their separate interests and individual pride and meet together on common ground, presenting a united front to the small minority of misguided humanity who are responsible for the major distresses which burden the great majority of the people. Their unpleasant strengths lie in the unity of their energies, endeavors, and disintegrating purpose. At this time, we are seeking those who are willing to become active co-workers of the spiritual hierarchy. Eliam Vista said, Whatever you wish to accomplish that amounts to anything requires the dedication of your life. One master told the students, It is admitted that many of you decree for world peace, but the intensity of those decrees and the number of people engaged in this activity is insufficient. The nations of the earth are sitting on a powder cake. Beloved students, so are you. It is your responsibility, your duty, as part of balancing your karma with the cosmic law, to serve the light now. I not only ask and urge you, but I say with full authority, it is your duty to help now. Your future spiritual development depends on this decision. The Machahan said, I might compare the efforts of the students dedicated to serving the great by brotherhood to that of a cosmic lamp. Each faithful student being part of the oil which keeps it burning. And I say to you, its light may be seen in the farthest reaches of the universe shining like a beacon from the land of shadow and pain. We, in the realms of light, thank you individually for each drop of oil which keeps this lamp alight. The ideal balance for the most rapid spiritual development is individual application leading to self-mastery coupled with active service. Lord Maitreya, the former teacher of Jesus, counseled, I summon you, where there was one Christ, now there must be many. Where there was one Master of Light, there must now be ten billion of them. Where there was one white-robed figure, skin bronzed by the sun, riding triumphantly into Jerusalem, now there must be many. Join then with the great beings of light, in a consecration of yourself and of your life energies to service. Every time that the door has been closed between the Ascended Master Octave and the human, it was closed because the investment from above was not balanced by works from below. Saint Germain stated, This is most important, for in the days that are to come, we do require an army of light all over this earth of individuals in a constant state of alertness, a constant state of grace, a constant state of harmony, balance and poise, ready to move at an instant. Then, if an activity is about to take place, we desire to erect a thousand light rays, simultaneously a thousand leaders will stand and a thousand groups will go into action and disaster will be averted. This is the training for those few who walk under the banner of freedom in my name. When your inner bodies are refined and you have that consciousness of listening grace, then easily in times of crisis we can use you. You are our hands. You are our feet. You are our lips through which we can speak. We have no other in the physical world. This concludes Lesson 14, Part 3. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it, and I hope we will meet soon again for Part 4 of the lesson. God bless you.